Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web, and today we're gonna uncrate the Alpine Stars SM10 motocross helmet. What's up, Speed Addicts fans? Before we jump in and tell you about the SM10, which is Alpine Stars top line motocross lid, before we do that, do us a favor, do you a favor, subscribe to the Speed Addicts channel, get dialed in, get educated, and the first look at all the latest gear, and of course, parts coming into the power sports industry. You don't have to worry about missing out if you're subscribed right now. Also, if you'd like to support us here at Speed Addicts, you can do so by simply shopping with us. It's as easy as going down to the description, hitting that link, it'll take you to the complete selection of Alpine Stars helmets over at speedaddicts.com. We got the motocross helmets. We have all the protection from Alpine Stars uh, for the dirt side and the street side. Uh, so you name it from Alpine Stars, even the motocross apparel, We've got it all at Speed Addicts at the best prices. Okay, top of the range. They have three different motocross helmet models at this time. They start with the SM5, which is a polycarb helmet. Then they move up to a composite SM8. And then they have the Coup de Gras, the SM10, available in both composite and carbon fiber. So you've been seeing more, more Alpine Stars helmets on folks' heads the past handful of years. Alpine Stars have been very aggressive when it comes to picking up athletes, especially in the Supercross and Motocross uh, here in the States, okay? So you've been seeing a lot of their apparel on the top guys and the helmets. Now, when the helmets first came out from Alpine Stars, everybody was pretty stoked to see them enter that new segment, us included, but really the helmet didn't move very well in the beginning. And really, I think it's because they tailored their helmets more towards athletes, you know, and a very serious motocross, supercross riders. And the same is kind of true for this SM10. Now, over the last few years, like I said, they've been doing their job at advertising and the sales have picked up on the SM series helmets. Uh, they've also improved the fit to make it just a little bit more forgiving in my opinion. Um, but this is still targeted at folks who are typically at the track, okay? And there's a few reasons why we'll go into that more in a minute. The composite version, which weighs right around three pounds, is going to cost you $619. And the full carbon fiber jammy, which is a few ounces lighter than that, is going to be $719. Both very light options, anything around or below three pounds for a motocross helmet is going to feel exceptionally lightweight. And when you're spending upwards of six or $700, that's one of the boxes you're gonna wanna check off. DOT and ECE 2205, we assume the Alpine Stars will be moving to the 2206 standard and having dual homologated helmets as such into 2024. Right now we're kind of winter of 2023 and this review is a little late to the party on this helmet because it has been out for a while. But <clears throat> we see new exciting graphics coming out on the SM10 that are quite popular and we wanted to refresh our video. So here we are, intermediate oval head shape, four shell sizes, big eye port and what I've noticed on the fit is it is firm. So if you like a luxurious, squishy fit uh, and you're going to go enduro riding all day, not the helmet for you, okay? This is more uh, attached to your head, part of you for your moto, okay? For your 20 minute moto or whatever you're riding, aggressively ventilated and aggressive racing fit to your noggin. Extra small through 2X, go by that Alpine Star sizing chart to pick your right size. In our opinion, it runs relatively true. Um, if you have any problems with the fit, remember if you shopped at Speed Addicts, you don't have to stress it because we have no cost returns. We do not nickel and dime you like those other guys. You know who I'm talking about. And charge for a return shipping label. Those jerks, can you believe they do that, producer Matt? <clears throat> Shame on them. If you shop for your helmet at Speed Addicts or any of your other gear, we're gonna give you that free return label. Get it on the way back here. Get a different size, a different color, or just a different model if you decide it's not for you. To qualify, live in the lower 48 states and make sure you don't abuse the gear. It needs to come back brand new, original packaging. Try it on in the living room, not on the trail, not on the track. Try it in the living room, 20, 30 minutes. I, don't, I just nag them. Okay, <clears throat> living room, 20 minutes. Watch the TV, relax, see if you got hot spots. See if you like it, you get the point. And then if it doesn't work out, it's still new and you can return it with Speed Axe very easily. If you like it, then go for it. Okay, let's get back to the helmet. Enough with our shameless plugs. We have lots of ventilation here. Ventilation will not be your issue. This thing looks like a big mouth bass. Do you see the size of that eye port? When it comes to ventilation, you have 
your entry points up in the crown and above the eye port and then you have below, okay? In both places, they've treated this thing just like uh, Swiss cheese here. Tons of grills. These are not just for show. These are actual intake ports all over, okay? So you got them up by the, the nose guard and then down below in the chin bar. Lots of places to pull mud out of after, uh, after your race. Up on the top, <clears throat> you can see some of them down low, some of them up top. The EPS is also ported aggressively and you have tons of exterior passive ventilation here. So this thing is hooked up. You will stay cool in this. The eye port being big is going to give you room around the massive size goggles that you're running. Air brakes, uh, Armegas from 100%, the big, big goggles, they take up a lot of room. You need to make sure you have a big eye port. Check that off of the list. When it comes to the peak, or as you might call it, the visor, in the industry we call it a peak because we're cool, is not adjustable, okay? So trail riders, enduro riders, uh, dual sport riders, you won't be able to move this around. Again, another thing that makes it probably better suited for the track. It does have a cool breakaway feature that should allow it to be uh, sheared off. This is twofold. This is so that your neck does not get injured by a peak that is more um, fixed to the helmet, if it has screws or something like that. These sort of, uh, these are pressure plates, right? So these are meant to pop off. They're kind of spring loaded. That's gonna help save your neck, hopefully, uh, of undue uh, momentum or, or forces, okay? So that's what that looks like on the inside. See those little pods? They're also gonna give you two. It's here somewhere. They give you two peaks. And the other thing is that if it shears off in a kind of a minor get off, hopefully the peak is intact. But in case, they give you a spare and you can always buy more if you need them. Okay. <clears throat> you are also going to get a Supertech branded bag here. There it is. Nice deluxe carrying bag. Overall, and that's them kind of trying to soup this thing up. $600 to $700, like my overall gut feeling on the quality of this thing is that it's, it's just a bit off the mark. If some of the trim pieces, the look and the feel and the like tolerances on some of these seams, just kind of look and feel like a helmet that's like more, you know, three or $400, not six, $700. Um, just something I wanted to call out there. There is the rear of the helmet. Inside you're gonna have a MIPS protection system. It's also e eject equipped. But before we go inside the helmet, one cool safety feature that is on the exterior and it is this collarbone relief. You notice there is a relief in the shell that moves up. Underneath this trim piece is EPS here. That is meant to save your collarbone, hopefully. If you take a digger and your head goes down, the bottom edge of that helmet can be hard and injure you. So a lot of the new gen top flight helmets like the SM10 have a collarbone uh, safety mechanism built into them and there it is. All right, let's roll this thing over and check out the interior. So interior is good looking, it's moisture wicking, it's antimicrobial, it's all those good things you want. In terms of fit and finish, I think the interior is actually better than a lot of the trim and other bits on this helmet. It feels higher end. Uh, inside of here, we have three different safety features that are not included on a lot of other motocross helmets and maybe can justify the price, especially if you are an athlete out at the track. You have their ERS, emergency release padding system here that is, uh, Utilize these little tabs. EMS pulls down on those and can slip these cheek pads out of the way. Whoops. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right. Let's see if I can get this out. There it is. You got to slide down. There's your cheek pad system. They have different size cheek pads to custom fit the helmet to your specs. And then we're going to pull this one down and out of the way as well. And this is going to reveal a few things. You're going to see a hydration channel that can be run, whoops, I don't wanna make you dizzy here. See that hydration channel, that's another thing you don't get on a lot of motocross helmets. It's good for the track, or if you're doing like desert racing, something like that where you want hydration, it will have it here. You also have a speaker pocket. Becoming more commonplace um, than in past years for motocross helmets, they have a little button in here. You remove that, it's a cutout in the EPS, you wanna run comms, there you go, you can run comms. With that out of the way, Let's look at the chin bar here. Big, wide open mesh. 
um, inserted plastic inserts, lots of breathability is the point. So we have kind of the primary muzzle vent, and then you probably have about eight other slits, uh, eight to 10 other slits to bring air into your mug and keep you cool, making good decisions. It's important, especially when you're racing. Let's remove the rest of the liner. So we're using a MIP system. There are many different flavors of MIPS out there today. In case you are not aware at this point, that is the MIPS logo. This is a third party company that creates a slippery, slipperier liner inside of the helmet between your scalp and the EPS. That slip allows uh, that energy to be mitigated, that rotational energy when you hit the ground, it wants your head to slip in there a little bit so that that rotational energy does not go in and cause you a concussion. Now there's no guarantees that it won't, uh, it will uh, overcome that in all cases, of course. Uh, MIPS claim that they're better than a helmet without MIPS. Now this one, you see that the liner is attached. The MIPS liner is basically like this, this slick layer in between the typical moisture wicking comfort liner and that EPS and it kind of clips on to those, it kind of jumps onto the little snaps that you see on most headliners. And we got these little fingers here. Now there's an existing pad. Let's see if we can get this out of the way. And through the magic television here we are, we're back with the liner out of the way. Now that was a beast. They have this crown liner section, the cheek pads, and then they have a top pad that's held in place by these four snaps. and they, top pad actually has three positions forward and backward to help you set the lean angle of the helmet. Okay. And that depends on your riding position, um, and personal preference. So it's cool that the top pad has that adjustment to help you adjust the lean angle of the helmet. Now the snaps that hold it in place are incredibly tight and there's four of them. They're these little ball snaps and there's female receivers inside the EPS that, uh, feel like you could pull them out of place, out of the EPS. They're really small and they're black, so they're hard for you to see, but they're back there. So there's three positions on these hooks and it took an absolute ton of force to remove those right now. And I did not feel comfortable removing all four because I do not want to pull them out of this EPS. Because once you pull female snaps out of an EPS liner, it is usually lights out. So we're not going to do that. And I advise you to be very careful when you're removing yours, given the force that's required. But when we move that top pad and the MIPS liner out of the way, you do see that eject logo. That's basically an air bladder system that you can install into the top of the helmet that has a little valve that comes out the side and uh, tubing to go to that to be inflated by uh, the EMS team if they have to gently remove the helmet from your head in case you are injured, okay? So MIPS, collarbone protection, eject system, hydration, lots of interesting features that you don't see in your everyday motocross helmet that Alpine Stars has baked into their SM10 to protect their athletes. And again, I think this is best suited for the track given all that stuff it's packing. Some of the things it doesn't have like the adjustable peak um, and just the overall fit and feel of it are very race tuned. One year warranty from Alpine Stars, which is about a year shorter than the industry standard. Alpine Stars generally has about a one year warranty on everything. They're a little bit uh, stingy on their warranty, but if you're going racing, it doesn't really matter at that point. Um, that about does it. If you still have questions, talk to our rider support team over at speedaddicts.com. They're hanging out on the phone, email and live chat. Otherwise, we will see you next time to find out what's in the crate.